Hi there, I'm Dr. Hatik and I have been practicing teaching and contributing research in anesthesia for nearly three decades. Let me tell you, regional anesthesia is not just about numbing a part of the body, it is a game changer for patient care. Ever heard the saying, biting the hand that feeds you? Well, the flagship journal of regional anesthesia, RAPM, seems to be doing just that. From doubting spinal anesthesia to publishing that interscaling block is dangerous and interscaling catheters don't work, it feels like they are tearing down the very principles that built the specialty. Click the link below to get your hands on Nysora's best-selling book on Amazon. Fresh off the Ezra World Conference in the City of Lights, Paris, I've got some insider scoop of what leaders in the field really think about this controversial stance. Buckle up folks, because in today's video, I'm not holding back from discussing why this direction might be doing more harm than good. Ready? Let's get started. What's up, Doc? Let's take a look at some examples in the recent past issues or RAPM where the articles promoted general anesthesia over spinal anesthesia for patients with hip fracture and reported a startling 35% complication rate for interscaling brachial plexus block, advocated for the end of further research on liposomal bupivacaine while publishing futile research on additives in neuroblocks, questioned efficacy of neurocatheters. I daily practice these anesthesia and analgesia modalities to the benefits of patients and our busy service of regional anesthesia, and yet RAPM pictures them as risky or ineffective. We have a large population of elderly patients with a high frailty index, and we see that they do better with spinal anesthetics than general anesthetics. Regional anesthesia specialists routinely use low-dose spinal anesthesia for hip fracture surgery. When expertly administered, spinal anesthesia drastically simplifies operating room and PACU management. Patients are much more stable postoperatively and require less nursing care in PACU. My name is Samuel Bokstal. Uh, I'm a specialist in emergency medicine, anesthesiology and uh, critical care uh, uh, management. And there is no doubt that those patients, which, which I see from the ER through the OR to the ICU, benefit from spinal anesthesia for their hip fracture management. So it's perplexing that the flagship journal of regional anesthesia, RAPM, seems to champion general anesthesia instead. Additionally, those specializing in regional anesthesia are well aware of the efficacy and safety of the interscaling brachial plexus blocks. At NYSORA Europe, at Zoll Belgium, we conduct over a thousand interscaling blocks annually without complications. Furthermore, while interscaling catheters have been trusted worldwide for postoperative pain management for years, RAPN suggests that they are ineffective. My intention isn't to discredit these studies, but to question the editorial choices that seem to undermine the established practices in regional anesthesia. If such unexpected and contrary findings are published, though, RAPM should at least offer an editorial or guidance article to inform and reassure the clinical community and ward off the potential backlash. These publications do not reflect our experience in our clinical practice, and they can be used by surgeons and or patients to deny these very valuable analgesic options. A few weeks ago, I highlighted an error in my post on LinkedIn, mistakenly terming regional anesthesia and pain medicine journal as the journal of bad news in regional anesthesia and pain medicine. I later updated it to a more appropriate, the journal against regional anesthesia. The RNPM's editorial office promptly responded with pursuing the truth, an editorial dismissing my concerns about their publication tendency towards negative outcomes in regional anesthesia. Moreover, the editorial misinterpreted my intention of raising awareness of the RAPM's publication trend as a negative commentary. Sticking to their editorial direction, however, seeds confusion and doubt about the role of the well-established value of regional anesthesia in clinical practice. When we have articles that come out saying general anesthesia equivocal to spinal anesthetics, we get a lot of back push from our orthopedic surgeons that say to us that 
why are you taking all of that time faffing around with blocks and spinal anesthetics when general anesthetics are equivocal to spinal anesthesia? As such, a continuation of this direction of RAPM poses a threat to the perception of our specialty among the practitioners, surgeons, patients, and the wider medical community. Let's look at just one latest case in point. The October 2023 article in RAPM reported that a continuous interscalene block based on a non-blinded study of merely 60 patients offers no analgesic advantages over a single injection. An injection of local anesthetic causes the block in the transmission of the nerve conduction. Continuous infusion simply extends its duration. I, for one, had continuous interscalene block for my own shoulder surgery and greatly benefited from it for several days. But publishing this disruptive information can be used by surgeons and patients to deny this incredibly valuable analgesia service, ultimately threatening patient care and the very subspecialty of regional anesthesia that RAPM intends to serve. To be honest, I, I don't think that the owners, the publishers of the journals really care about the content. They think about what's the relative power of their journal through the impact factor. And this leads to often publication of controversial trials because they can get an awful lot of uh, citations. My words in my LinkedIn posts and in this YouTube video come from a place of respect and concern, not negativity. Why? Because articles published in RAPM might lead to misconception about the benefits of regional anesthesia, as you will see later in the video. With articles published in RAPM that favor general anesthesia over spinal anesthesia for hip fractures, articles that teach a 35% complication rate for interscalene blocks and question the efficacy of nerve catheters, the RAPM journal basically challenges the most established and most prevalent techniques of regional anesthesia in the very specialty of anesthesiology that it aims to develop. My name is Walter Stalens. I'm a fellow at local regional anesthesia. Uh, in my experience, uh, spinal anesthesia is better than GA for uh, hip fractures. I've never seen complication with interscalium blocks. I believe in uh, interscalium block with catheters. I simply don't know which message RAPM is trying to convey. I respect the RAPM journal's team and contributors, but I worry about their vision in positioning the journal as a leading voice of regional anesthesia. We need a balance between unearthing truths and upholding our field's legacy. My concern is not about silencing voices, it is about fostering constructive, community-driven dialogue of value to the clinicians, not about introducing confusion. Uh, I'm Dr. Simon Jaguna, I'm one of the new fellows uh, doing my regional anesthesia fellowship at uh, Zoll Zickenhaus in uh, Ghent in Belgium. I wonder how this information in regional anesthesia and pain medicine will affect my training and my further career. As a patient, I have benefited from interscalene catheters, expert for analgesia after my rotator cuff surgery, and have witnessed tremendous benefits and not failures, lack of efficacy or complications. One other concern is that the journal assumes a negative approach to everything that is related to industry communication and industry support as ultimately biased and suspicious of being untrue. However, the journal profits from advertising for the industry by actively soliciting to share industry's products and services in the journal and in the journal's email communication to its subscribers. A symbiotic relationship between business, industry, and science can foster an environment where the researchers have resources and incentives to delve deeper into their fields of study. Taking such an overtly negative, repellent stance against industry is unlikely to benefit anyone. Given these patterns, the RAPM's alignment with the regional anesthesia community goals and principles becomes questionable. The journal's current path risks the reputation of regional anesthesia specialty, but also it threatens the organized regional anesthesia societies for which RAPM aims to be 
as a form of publication. This is evidenced by decreasing attendance at the society meetings and dwindling support by the industry. Why attend the meetings if the well-established advantages of regional anesthesia are now questioned? And all industry efforts to improve the practice of the subspecialty of regional anesthesia are being challenged as being unethical or biased. Such a pessimistic, overly critical and unbalanced stance by the flagship journal in regional anesthesia might be perceived by the industry as too risky or complicated for future investing into the subspecialty and developing new equipment and much needed longer acting local anesthetics and other analgesic drug innovations, potentially rendering the specialty stagnant and obsolete. The advocacy left by the pioneers of regional anesthesia in the United States and elsewhere aimed to bolster the field. But observing the current RAPM's trajectory, however, one cannot help but wonder if the fathers of regional anesthesia would endorse the current journal's course. My observations stem from a genuine concern for the evolving direction of regional anesthesia and pain medicine, a journal I regard as a beacon in regional anesthesia. My comments assume an appreciation for the RAPM editorial office and the diligent researchers who contribute invaluable insights through their diligent scientific work and publications. But in my perspective, however, the editorial team of the RAPM should embrace more advocacy-driven approach in the selection of the papers to better align with the aspirations and the needs of the community they serve. My hope is that this constructive feedback serves to enhance the journal's role as a trusted and vital resource and a catalyzer for the further development of regional anesthesia. We, the community, however, cannot remain silent and we must engage to ensure that the discourse on regional anesthesia matters remains balanced and community-oriented. I invite your thoughts and insights on this matter as I know that I'm not alone in my views it's just that few are willing to stick their necks out on this matter. But someone has to, or we will risk erosion of the subspecialty and its perception among the patients and the medical community. Thank you for watching. Please consider liking the video and subscribing to the channel so you don't miss the future videos. And I invite you to leave your comments below and actively engage in our efforts to reaffirm the value of regional anesthesia in clinical practice without needless challenging decades established techniques that are bread and butter of our subspecialty. Until next time.